I want to be fully honest <laughs> before we begin. But this is an article that we've read before, maybe a couple of months ago, one month ago. And I saw this article again just by chance. And I think I just thought it's an article wor worth reading. And I was reading through it again, and I actually don't remember a lot of it. And it's, I think it's a really good article. So uh, I read it back then when there was not as much uh, subscribers on the channel. So I just wanted to read it again just to in reintroduce it to you. And I think it can be helpful for a lot of people. How I Learned System Design by Himanshu Singur, Singur on medium.com The honest journey from total confusion to clarity. Let me be brutally honest with you. There was a time I used to skip every video or blog that said system design. I would think this is for senior engineers, architects, not for me. I have to say I'm kind of one of those and I've opened up a little bit more recently because I worked on this project where we designed this health management app using like from scratch and we built it um, and so system design was a big part of it in the project so yeah after that I feel more confident I feel more interested it's not my favorite thing but still I think it's obviously important it's a big part of our job I believe and I think this makes me a better developer so I'm interested I was wrong because one day in an interview they asked me can you design a ride-sharing app like uber and I froze how many people can do this from the from the top of their head I talked about rest api's I mentioned my sequel then silence no clue how to handle scale no idea about queues or how to restore real-time location that day I decided this won't happen again Here's how I went from being totally lost to confidently discussing architecture in interviews and even proposing better designs at work. Number one, first, I accepted I knew nothing and that was okay. System design is intimidating at first. People throw words like sharding, CQRS, load balancer, eventual consistency. Actually, that's true. One of the things that makes system design so hard, I believe, is just the vast Plasticity, if there's a word, of the domain. There's so much to learn, so many services that do similar things, and that's it's daunting. At first, it made me feel dumb, but then I realized everyone feels lost in the beginning. System design isn't a single topic; it's not a chapter. You can come, you can. It's not a single chapter you can complete in a week. It's a mix of how data flows, how services talk to each other, how systems survive under huge traffic, and how to manage, how to make things fault tolerant, fast and reliable. Once I accepted that this will take time, it felt lighter. I stopped chasing perfection and focused on small wins. I, I guess you can say this about anything, right? I think, especially with the software engineering, there's that, there's that idea about we need to do things fast we need to learn things fast and so on but things just takes time and over time we become experts and i feel like if if you want to really learn something and really become part of your nature it just takes time and we can't do anything about it we just have to spend time on it and yeah and just enjoy the process because i don't think you can really speed up the learning except to work hard but there's always the limit i broke down system design into many topics system design is not one big subject it's a set of interconnected building blocks so i made a map for myself a the basics what happens when you type a url in the browser what is dns load balancer cdn tcp versus udp http versus https i think i can answer most of these questions maybe like six out of ten not like in detail very detailed very elaborate way but enough to just be like okay he knows what he's talking about he, he gets a general idea even these basics were eye-opening like did you know dns is like a phone book for the internet and cdns are why youtube loads fast i know dns but not cdns b data and storage sql versus no sql indexing replication sharding when to choose mongodb versus postgresql i learned this the hard way in one project we chose mongodb for transactional data later we regretted it 
These, these I feel a little bit more comfortable with just because of my background in data science. Uh, C, scaling techniques, horizontal versus vertical scaling, caching, Redis, memcached, load balancing, round robin, IP hashing. I loved this part. It made me feel like I could finally design something for millions of users, even if it was just on paper. D, architecture patterns, monolith versus microservices, event-driven architecture, pop, slash sub, message queues, Kafka, RabbitMQ. This made me understand why companies like Netflix use microservices, not just because it's trendy, but because it makes sense at scale. I watched real people think, not just teach. Instead of watching tutorial type style videos, I started watching mock interviews and trust me, that changed everything. Because when some, someone thinks aloud, make mistakes, backtracks and justifies their choices, you learn how to think, not just copy. Channels that really helped me. Grafsen, Grafsen explains from the ground up, exponent mock interviews with real candidates, by by go, visual, storytelling approach, I learned how to ask the right, right clarifying questions, define functional and non-functional requirements, walk through API design, DB choices, scaling logic, always talk about trade-offs, not just choices. Yeah, I think these are really, these are the skills that are really good to hone in on, I believe. And not just for system design, but just in general too whether it be coding questions, logic questions, algorithm questions. I think those are, these are all really good questions. And always talk about trade-offs, not just choices. I think that's one thing that I'm pretty bad at. I tend to just focus on choices and forget to talk about trade-offs, but yeah, it's a good reminder. Number four, I started drawing even if it was just on paper. One surprising thing that helped me, drawing. I'm not an artist, but sketching out a flow from client, load balancer, app service, DB made it click. When I drew, that request flow felt real. I saw where bottlenecks could happen, understood where to place a cache, when to use a queue. Even today when I'm stuck, I grab a pen and paper. That sketch often gives me the clarity that reading never did. For me as well, I think I'm a very visual learner, so when I want to get a comprehensive idea about something and I want to compartmentalize it in my head, I draw. I think it's also good to draw, implement it yourself, and then draw, and then from there, draw again. Because I think the drawing, the whole idea is that you know that you can do those things uh, like in real life. Either it's you code something or you implement like a services, but it just takes time. Since I know how to do that, it's just details, I can draw. And that's equivalent to doing it. it saves so much time and yeah so I think that's really powerful in that sense but yeah I think it's important to know how to do it as well I practiced with real system design problems once I was confident with basics I stopped watching and started designing here's how I practiced pick a real-world systems watch that WhatsApp, YouTube, Zomato, Instagram, write the functional requirements first, what the system should do, then add non-functional requirements, scale, availability, and latency, do rough estimations, users, QPS, DB size, design a high-level architecture, go deeper into DB schema, APIs, scaling strategies, handling failures, edge cases. I wrote one design per week, and not just one solution, but multiple possibilities. I wonder how much the users spent time on this per week. Because in real interviews and real jobs, there's rarely one perfect answer. It's all about just justifying why you picked X over Y. Number six, I applied it at work. Theory is useless unless you apply it. At work, I was working on a high traffic service for EMI generation. It had Kafka events, REST APIs, complex trans transactions. This is where I started applying design principles. I proposed breaking a monolith into services, used queues for async communication, introduced retries and dead letter queues, and even debated Kafka versus gRPC based on latency and control. It wasn't perfect, but it gave me confidence that system design isn't just about interview stuff, but it's real, valuable skill that helps your team and your product. I think that's a super cool idea, in fact. I think not only system design, but if there's something that you want to learn, you should look at how it's done at work, and from there, you can learn from it, or you can contribute to it. 
And of course, it's not gonna earn you direct extra income or better salary or anything like that, but it's an opportunity for you to learn at the least. And on top of that, people will appreciate your work around you. And I think that that rarely goes without being noticed. So yeah, I think that's really cool. And also it's a real work settings too. So you have already had the domain knowledge and this is something very, it's there. It's, um, it's something that you can really hold. So yeah. Number seven, I started explaining to others. This was the final level. When you explain something, be it to a junior, an intern or an on, in a blog, you spot the gaps in your own understanding. So I mentored juniors during onboarding, took some more sessions to explain caching, DB design and cues, wrote articles with diagrams, started preparing juniors for design interviews. Every time I explained something, I realized if I can teach it simply, I actually understand it well. My honest advice to you, if you are starting today or if you failed in your first design interview, I want to tell you this. System design is not magic. You don't need 10 years of experience. You don't need to memorize graph sense diagrams. You just need to start with basics, think in real world use cases, build a structure, practice weekly, ask why behind every choice and slowly improve. Even if you give 30 minutes daily in three months, you will see the difference. I think this is really important. And this is aligned with one of my favorite quotes that says people overestimate how much they can get done in a day and they underestimate how much they can get done in a year so always doing something a little bit every day and i think that's an important reminder for myself too final thought it's not about answers it's about approach in system design you will often feel uncertain that's normal what matters is how you approach a problem when you explain what's the scale what's the bottleneck what are the trade-offs of this dv versus that one what if this service fails that's what makes you a strong engineer not the number of diagrams you memorized so keep going start with how does a url work and end with designing instagram <laughs> you'll be amazed at how far you've come one system at a time. If you made it till here, thank you. I'm sharing more such things from such learnings from real backend on my journey. Himanju Singer. Yeah, I I think this is a really cool article. I every t yeah, this is the second time reading it, and I just like the fact that someone feels passionate about something and they uh, start they patient they feel passionate enough to start teaching themselves and they get good enough so that they can start applying in real world applications and especially when they are very consistent with their work so yeah i find it really motivating and really insightful this article i hope you guys enjoyed as well and thank you guys for watching and like and subscribe bye, -bye.